it can be difficult to know whose expert opinion to trust, or sometimes who to trust at all. Hello, hello, you're listening to Well Intel Daily. I'm Annie Hood. This is the podcast that joins the dots on well-being perspective and everyday relevance. Dying Matters Awareness Week began on May the 8th, Monday of this week, uh, through to the 14th. The aim is to get people talking and sharing stories openly about dying and grief and to reduce the associated stress, stigma and social isolation that can be related to it. The reason I'm mentioning it today is the dialed up crystal clarity that many people refer to when they know there is a time limit on their life and they still have things left to say. Pete Betts is one of the world's most revered and experienced environmental negotiators. He also has terminal cancer and he spoke up recently in an FT piece called 13 Lessons from a Climate Change Diplomat with Months Left to Live. I'll include a link to the article in the episode notes. If you can't access it because it is behind a paywall, do contact me and I will gift that article to you. I'm going to talk about three things out of the 13 that he highlights. Number one, the real output of COP, which of course is Conference of the Parties for Climate Change. The real output of COP being wildly misunderstood. He talks about the need for a much bigger spotlight on the failure of countries such as China, whose emissions are bigger than those of the entire developed world put together. Instead, far more attention is placed on things like what is said about fossil fuels in the wording of a final decision, to which then no single country can be held to account. Pete Betts is 63 and he believes that his generation failed Greta Thunberg's. He highlights that no one person is responsible, but as a collective, as a collective generation of leaders, he feels the baby boomer generation has failed young people today. And third, that the 1.5 degree limit is hanging by a thread. He explains that the reality of where we are is that global temperatures may rise over the Paris Agreement's 1.5 degrees unless urgent additional action happens now. Not next year or next month, but now. He highlights China as mattering most, but also that developed countries outside of Europe, such as the US, Canada, Japan and Australia, have failed to act in any meaningful way for decades when they could have done so much more at a more manageable cost. And he believes that climate campaigners treat China too gently. He underlines the fact that the carbon emissions issue cannot be solved without China. His particular insights matter because they're provided by a man so close to his end and having been immersed in the environment sector his entire career, one feels instinctively that he holds a deeper truth and gravitas. He has nothing to lose and seeks to convey a no-holds-barred reality check. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about money and the cost of living. Do follow, share and review, and of course, be well.